The Jack Benny Program, transcribed and presented by Lucky Strike. You know, for real smoking enjoyment, nothing, no nothing beats better taste. And Lucky's taste better. Cleaner, fresher, smoother. Lucky's taste better. Cleaner, fresher, smoother. For Lucky Strike means fine tobacco, richer tasting. Fine tobacco. Lucky's taste better. Cleaner, fresher, smoother. Lucky Strike. Lucky Strike. This is Don Wilson. Friends, no doubt about it, your enjoyment of a cigarette depends on its taste. For nothing, no nothing, beats better taste. And Lucky's taste better. Cleaner, fresher, smoother. You see, Lucky's better taste starts right off with the fine, mild, good-tasting tobacco that goes into Lucky's. And then, Lucky's are made better to give you a cleaner, fresher, smoother-tasting smoke. Yes, sir, only fine tobacco in a better-made cigarette can give you all the deep-down smoking enjoyment you want. So why not switch to Lucky Strike? Yes, be happy. Go lucky. You'll find... Lucky's taste better. Cleaner, fresher, smoother. Lucky Strike! Lucky Strike! The Lucky Strike program starring Jack Benny with Mary Livingston, Rochester, Dennis Day, Bob Crosby, and yours truly, Don Wilson. And now, let's go out to Jack Benny's house in Beverly Hills. It's such a lovely morning that outside on the front lawn, we hear the splashing of birds in the bird bath. While upstairs, we hear the sound of the shower. Oh, what a beautiful morning. Oh, what a beautiful day. I've got a wonderful feeling that everything's going my way. Rochester, I'm through showering. You can stop singing now. (laughs) Okay. Say, Rochester, I don't know where you're buying soap lately, but that new bar I just used didn't lather at all. I didn't know you took a new bar of soap. Did you get it out of the service closet? No, I found it in the kitchen. In the drawer? No, in a dish near the drain board. Well, congratulations, boys. Why? You have just showered with a peeled potato. A peel... Imagine showering with a peeled potato. You now have the skin that lamb chops love to touch. <laughs> Never mind that. Here, take this towel and dry my back, will you please? Yes, sir. Ah, that feels good. Boss, you sure have well-developed shoulders. Oh, thank you, Rochester. Yes, sir. Did you ever do any fighting? Oh, yes, yes, a long time ago. As a matter of fact, I won 22 fights. I was known as the Waukegan Wildcat. Waukegan Wildcat? Yes. Uh, Why did you quit? Well, they made us put on gloves and I couldn't scratch anymore. (laughs) So I got a manicure and retired. Now, Rochester, while I get dressed, how about fixing me some breakfast? Yes, sir. beautiful morning. Oh, what a beautiful day. I've got a wonderful... Oh, oh, good morning, Polly. Oh, what a beautiful morning. Oh, what a beautiful day. Ah, I've got a wonderful feeling that something is coming my way. She had a feeling all right. She laid an egg. Good girl, Polly. Morning. Oh, hello, Rochester. Oh, good morning, Miss Livingston. Come right in. You must be in a good mood. I heard you singing as you were coming to the door. Oh, I always sing when it's getting close to my payday. Really? When is your payday? September 1st. <laughs> September 1st? But this is only April. Why do you sing so long before payday? There ain't much to sing about after. (laughs) I know what you mean. Oh, good morning, Mary. Hello, Jack. 
You know, it's so early, I thought you'd still be in bed. In bed? Are you kidding? I've already taken my shower. Rochester, how about breakfast? Coming up. Mary, would you care for something to eat? No, thanks. I'm not hungry. You know, Mary, you look kind of cute this morning. You really do. How about a kiss? Okay. Hmm. <laughs> That's funny. What? I just said I wasn't hungry, and now I've got a craving for potatoes. <laughs> Cleanest ones in town. Uh, what? Nothing, nothing. Rochester, uh, just make my breakfast. Uh, uh, wait a minute, Jack. What is Rochester talking about? All right, I'll tell you. This morning when I was taking a shower, I thought I picked up a cake of soap, but it turned out to be a peeled potato. It could happen to anybody. That couldn't happen to Gracie Allen. <laughs> all right, all right. So I showered with a potato. What do you want me to do? Kiss me, I'm hungry. <laughs> Never mind. Rochester, is breakfast ready? I just put the coffee on. What else would you like? Well, I'd like a little bacon and, uh, uh, one fried E-G-G. -G. Yes, sir. A little bacon and one fried E-G-G. -G. Jack, what's the idea of the spelling? Why don't you just say you want a little bacon and one fry? Uh-uh, uh-uh, Don't say it, Mary. Don't say it. We always spell it. You know, Polly lays an E-G-G -G every day, and she'd go crazy if she ever found out we were eating them. Oh. E-G-G, E-G-G. -G. Isn't that cute? E-G-G, 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 E-G-G. Hey! Rochester, no eggs. Fix me some pancakes. And... Yes, sir. Now, who can that be? Oh, I'll get it. Oh, hello, Dennis. Hello, Mary. Is Mr. Benny in? Yes, he's having breakfast. Well, I'm sure glad he's here because I got plenty to tell him. Dennis, what's the matter? Fourteen years this has been going on, and I've had all I can take. I've stood enough, believe me. Well, Dennis, Dennis, what, what is it? I wouldn't mind if it was only once or twice, but every week, the same thing, week in and week out. After all, what does he take me for? I'm fed up, I tell you, fed up! Well, Dennis, I, I don't know what's on your mind, but obviously you should talk to Mr. Benny. Oh, I'll say I'm gonna talk to him. <laughs> I'm gonna tell him off. Well, come on, he's in the breakfast room. Oh, hello, Dennis. Hello, Mr. Benny. Gee, you're looking well today. <laughs> uh, thanks, kid. What'd you come over for? Oh, I just happened to be in the neighborhood, and I thought I'd drop in. Well, well, I'm glad you did. Dennis, what are you waiting for? Why don't you tell him off? What are you trying to do, start something? <laughs> Yes, Mary, what's the matter with you? What's the matter with me? Yeah. You've been mistreating Dennis and taking advantage of him for 14 years. What? And he's had enough of it. After all, what do you take him for? Mary, what are you trying to do, make trouble or something? That's telling her, Mr. Benny. <laughs> uh, now, wait a minute. Look, Dennis, I'm going to straighten this thing out right now. Didn't you come to the door and tell me that you were mad at Mr. Benny? Uh-huh. And didn't you tell me that you were fed up with the way he was treating you? Uh-huh. And didn't you say you were going to tell him plenty? Uh-huh. Then why is it when you walked up to Mr. Benny, you were so nice to him? When I saw his long fingernails, I lost my nerve. <laughs> Stop being silly. Now, Dennis, I want to hear the song you're going to do on the program, so go ahead. Yes, sir. Suddenly, your touch 
became a thrill And suddenly I knew I was part of you And yet I told my heart Be still, be still Suddenly your lips were kissing mine Suddenly my world became divine For when I look around Then I knew I'd found Eternity with you So suddenly That was very good, Dennis. It'll be fine on the program. Say, Rochester, is my toast ready yet? Not yet, boss. It's in the toaster. Well, say, Mr. Benny, what's this I hear about you going up to San Francisco for three weeks? That's right, Dennis. Next Sunday, I do my television show, and my guest star is Fred Allen. Immediately after my TV show, I fly to San Francisco and open at the Curran Theater on April 20th, and I'll be there for three weeks. Uh, Jack, who are you going to have on your stage show? Well, Mary, I'm going to have the Will Maston Trio featuring Sammy Davis Jr., Giselle McKenzie, and an all-star cast, including Frank Remley. <laughs> Frank Remley? What's he going to do? Nothing, but the stage would look so empty without him lying there. <laughs> it's going to be a great show. <laughs> Rochester, what was that? The toast, it flew out the window. <laughs> oh, my goodness. That piece of toast landed on the lawn, and it'll attract ants. I'll be right back. Now, let's see. It flew out through that window, so it should be right on the lawn. Hmm, I don't see it. Maybe it flew out into the street. Funny, I don't see it around here, either. Hmm, there's the Coleman's garbage can. It hasn't got a lid on it. <laughs> I wonder if the toast could have gone in there. Gee, I got a finder who will be loaded with ants. Hmm. There are several pieces of toast in here. Jack! Huh? Oh, hello, Bob. I was just looking for a piece of toast. <laughs> well, Jack, why didn't you tell me that things were that rough? Why, it worked for nothing. <laughs> Bob, you don't understand. Well, Jack, you can be honest with me. Come on, I'll take you down to the market and buy you enough food to last for two months. Bob, I'm trying to tell you that... What'd you say? <laughs> huh? Well, I said that I'd take you down to the market and buy enough food for two months. Jack, come on in. Your breakfast is ready. You eat it. Bob and I are going shopping. <laughs> Now, wait a minute. You mean you have food in the house and yet you are going to let me try to buy some for you? Bob, I was just going to teach you a lesson for being so silly. Now, come on in the house. Hello, Mr. Crosby. Hello, Rochester. Hiya, Mary. Hello, Bob. Hiya, Bob. Hiya, Dennis. Sit down, kids. Mary, pour everybody some coffee. Okay. You? Make mine black. Black? Dennis, I thought you always took cream. Why do you want a black? I'm in mourning. My uncle died. <laughs> Dennis. Dennis, you're kidding. No, I'm not. He committed suicide. Suicide? Yeah. Did he shoot himself? No. Did he hang himself? No. <laughs> well, did he take poison? No. Well, for heaven's sakes, how did he do it? He bought a bottle of Stop It and pooped himself to death. <laughs> Yo, 
milk's over past the cream. <laughs> you know, Bob, Bob, I think it's only fair that I warn you. Well, warn me about what? Before Phil Harris met Dennis, he didn't drink a drop. <laughs> Everything happened after... There's someone at the back door. Rochester, give everybody coffee. I'll answer. Uh, hello, Mr. Bunny. Oh, the man from the bakery shop, huh? Uh, yeah, I got the stuff that you ordered. Some donuts, some chocolate cake, some pastry, and a half a dozen Cimarron rolls. <laughs> You still can't pronounce it, can you? Look, it isn't Cimarron, it's Cinnamon. Now, let me ask you something. Maybe this will help you pronounce it. How are these rolls made? Well, you take some flour, sugar, eggs, and... Uh, and uh, do you want to know all the ingredients? <laughs> now, look, it, it isn't ingredients. It's ingredients. Yes, I want to know all of them, then. Well, there's flour, sugar, eggs, shortening, and cinnamon. That's it. That's it. That's it. Now, now, look, take your time. Think. Okay. Now, let me hear you say it. Ingredients. <laughs> I don't mean ingredients. I'm trying to get you to say Cimarron. <laughs> I, mean, I mean cinnamon. Why don't you order something else? You drive me nuts. <laughs> All right, just give me my stuff. <laughs> Thanks and goodbye. Bye. Uh, Jack, who is that? Oh, that silly guy from the bakery. The fellow who insists upon saying Cimarron rolls. Well, here you are, kid. You can have some of these with your coffee. They're nice and fresh. Uh, wait a minute, Jack. He's right. What do you mean he's right? Well, look at that label on this paper box. These are genuine Cimarron rolls, named after J.P. Cimarron, founder of the Cimarron Baking Company. <laughs> what? These Cimarron rolls should not be confused with ordinary cinnamon rolls, which are made from entirely different ingredients. <laughs> Hmm. Well, Jack, I guess that'll hold you. Hold me nothing. That silly guy had that label printed himself just because he can't say cinnamon. He must be crazy. Well, boss, there's one way of finding out. How? Ask him if he showers with a peeled potato. <laughs> Let's cut out all of this nonsense. Do you kids want the rolls with your coffee or not? Oh, I'll have some. So live. Dennis, how about... Dennis? Dennis, what are you stirring your coffee with? My paper-made pen. Dennis. Well, don't worry, it's leak-proof. <laughs> what? Joke's over, pass me a spoon. Stop being silly. Well, I don't know how long Phil stood at Jackson, but I'm slipping. Get the ice. <laughs> You'll need more than ice before you get through it. There's a front door. You want me to get it, boss? No, no, I'll get it. All I did was shower with a peeled potato. The whole day is mixed up. Yes? How do you do? My name is Martindale. I represent a law firm that specializes in settling estates and tracing legal heirs. Legal heirs? Yes. Does uh, Mr. Jack Benny live here? Oh, I'm Jack Benny. Well, then it's very possible that you're the man I'm looking for. Uh, may I come in? Yes, yes. Uh, have a seat, Mr. Martindale. Uh, Mr. Benny, if you're the man we're looking for, an aunt whom you have never seen has left you a legacy of $5,000. $5,000? Hey, kids! Kids, come on in here! Uh, uh, what is it, Jack? Yeah, what's up? Yeah, what, 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 what? <laughs> you, 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 you tell them, Mr. Martindale uh, Certainly uh, We have reason to believe that Mr. Benny's Aunt Matilda, whom he has never met, left him $5,000 Hey, that's wonderful Yes, yeah, where's the money? Where's the money? Where's the money? 
the money. My Aunt Matilda. The money. Uh, I've got the check right here in my briefcase. Oh, uh, but first I'll have to verify a few facts. Oh, of course, of course. Go, go ahead, mister. Ask me anything you want. Good old Aunt Matilda. <laughs> oh, darn it. Excuse me. I have to answer the legacy. I mean the money. I mean the phone. Hello? Hello, Jack. This is Don. Goodbye, Don. I mean, call me... Call me back later. I'm very busy right now. Oh, I can't call you later. The sportsman quartet is here, and they're leaving town in a few minutes, and but we've got to settle something very important. Now, we've got the commercial two ways, and I don't know which way is better. But, Don... You're the only one who right can help us. It'll only take a minute. Boys, boys, come on over to the phone. Let him hear it the first way. Don, look Don, at Now, I have... listen, Jack. Listen oh. closely. Take it, fellas. <laughs> Be happy, go lucky, be happy, go lucky, strike me happy, go lucky, get better taste today. Beetle dee poo 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 poo. <laughs> Look, Don. Now that was the first way. Now, fellas, give it to him the second way. Don, be I happy, have got go time lucky, for this. be I'm, happy, I've got a man go lucky, the... strike me happy, go lucky, get better taste today. Poodle dee poo 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 poo. <laughs> well, now, Jack, which way did you like better? <laughs> Which way did I like better? Don, I didn't hear any difference You didn't? No Well, for heaven's sakes, why don't you pay attention? Look, Don Fellas, the first way again Don, look, be happy, I got a man go waiting lucky, for me Be happy, go I lucky, got time be for happy, me. go lucky, get better taste today Beetle poo 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 <laughs> Now, that was the first way. I know, I know. Now, fellas, the second way. Don, I don't care. Be happy, go lucky, be happy, go lucky, strike me happy, go lucky, get better taste today. Poodle dee poo 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 poo. <laughs> okay, Jack, which way do you like better? Don, are you crazy? <laughs> Both ways were exactly alike. What do you mean exactly alike? I sit up all night working this thing out, and you say there isn't any difference. Well, there isn't. There's a big difference. In the first one, when the boys finished singing, I went peedly poo 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 poo. Uh huh. And in the second one, I went poodly poo 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 poo. <laughs> Don, you called me to decide between peedledy and poodledy? <laughs> That's right, Jack. Which way do you like it better? Well... Fellas, the first way... No, again. no, no, Don, no. No. I've already reached a decision. Good. What is it? It is my considered opinion that nothing, no nothing, beats Harry Von Zell. <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm sorry about this interruption, Mr. Martindale. Oh, that's quite all right, Mr. Benny. Now, I'll answer any questions, and then you can give me the $5,000 my Aunt Matilda left to me. Uh, Jack. Huh? Jack, come here a minute. What is it, Mary? Jack, Bob and I have been talking it over. If your Aunt Matilda never saw you, why should she leave you all that money? Because she was my own flesh and blood. Jack, if she had any of your blood, she wouldn't leave anything to anybody. <laughs> oh, quiet. Okay, Mr. Martindale, I'll answer those questions now. Very well. <clears throat> uh, Mr. Benny, were you born in Waukegan, Illinois? Yes, yes. You see, Mary? You see, it's me. It's me. And uh, at the age of six, you started to practice a musical instrument. That's right. That's right. That's right. <laughs> that's right. That's right. <laughs> and, uh... That instrument was? The violin, the violin, violin, violin. I still play it, the violin. The violin, I yes. play the violin. Now, uh, the vi a fiddle, the fiddle, the violin. Yes, sir. You, uh, <clears throat> you graduated from Central Elementary School and went to Waukegan High School. That's right, that's right, that's right, that's right. <laughs> right, 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 right. I played the violin at the high school, violin, right? Right, right, right. At uh, right. the age of 17, you left Waukegan, became an actor, and went into... Vaudeville. I went into Vaudeville, Vaudeville, Vaudeville. I played the violin in my vo in the Vaudeville. That's yeah. right. <laughs> yes, that's right. Right, right, right. Mr. Right, right. Benny, uh, I'm sure that further questioning is unnecessary. I'm firmly convinced that you're the man we're looking for. Where's the money? Where's the money? The money. Where's the money? <laughs> oh, oh, uh, just a minute. Here's one question I neglected to check. Uh, how old are you? 39. 
39. Well, that's strange. Every other answer seemed to fit, but the Jack Benny we're looking for was born in 1894. Now, that would make him 59. Hmm. But, Mr. Martindale, it, it must be me. There was no other Jack Benny born in Waukegan who plays a violin. I'm sorry, but the Jack Benny we're looking for, who gets this $5,000, was born in 1894 and is 59 years old. Hmm. <laughs> Well, 59? Yes. Yeah. Well, this is a tale well calculated to keep you in suspense. <laughs> Mr. Martindale, I'm sorry, but I'm not the Jack Benny you're looking for. I am only 39. Well, I'm sorry, Mr. Benny. I was hoping my search was over. <laughs> oh, good day. Goodbye, Mr. Martindale. Yeah, da dee da dum, da dee da dum, da dum, bum be da da. Jack. Da dum, dum dee da da. Jack. Da 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 dum. Jack. What is it, Mary? I can't believe what I just heard. What do you mean you can't believe it? Jack, all you had to do was to say you were 59 and you would have gotten the money. Uh-huh. But by insisting that you are 39, you lost $5,000. That's right. I can't understand it. Why? Mary, I may not be a spendthrift, but I know a bargain when I see one. <laughs> bargain? Where else can you buy 20 years for $5,000? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, our forests are among our most vital resources. Last year, through carelessness, forest fires destroyed millions of acres of valuable timber. This shameful waste weakens America. Protect our forests. Don't toss away lighted matches or cigarettes. Make sure every campfire is completely out. Remember, only you can prevent forest fires. Thank you. Jack will be back in just a moment, but first... Nothing, no nothing beats better taste. And remember... Lucky's taste better. Cleaner, fresher, smoother. Lucky's taste better. Cleaner, fresher, smoother. For lucky strike means fine tobacco, richer tasting. Fine tobacco. Lucky's taste better. Cleaner, fresher, smoother. Lucky strike, lucky strike. Friends, it just stands to reason. The cigarette for you to smoke is the one that tastes better. Because when all is said and done, nothing, no nothing, beats better taste. And Lucky's taste better, cleaner, fresher, and smoother. Here's why. Lucky's better taste really begins with fine tobacco. Most anyone can tell you, LSMFT, Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. Fine, light, naturally mild tobacco with a wonderful aroma and an even better taste. And Lucky's also taste better because they're made better. They're made round and firm and fully packed to draw freely and smoke evenly. Yes, made better to give you a cleaner, fresher, smoother tasting smoke. So enjoy the better taste that only fine tobacco and a better made cigarette can give. When you buy cigarettes, ask for a carton of Lucky Strike. Be happy, go lucky, get better taste today. Ladies and gentlemen, that concludes another program, and we'll be with you next week at the... Excuse me. Hello? Yes, this is Jack Benny. Yes, Fred Allen is going to be my guest on my television program next Sunday, April 19th. That's right. What? Yes, yes, he'll get paid in cash right after the show. You're welcome. Uh, Jack, who is that? The manager of the hotel where Fred stayed. <laughs> Good night, folks. Jack Benny program is written by Sam Perrin, Milt Josephsburg, George Balzer, John Tackerberry, and produced and transcribed by Hilliard Marks. Be sure to hear The American Way with Horace Height for Lucky Strike every Thursday over this same station. Consult your newspaper for the time. 
Jack Benny program is brought to you by Lucky Strike, product of the American Tobacco Company, America's leading manufacturer of cigarettes. This is the CBS Radio Network. <laughs>